Hello, hello again to another Anga Color React. And today we'll be watching why clothes are so expensive from so expensive from Business Insider. And uh, I'm really kind of hoping for seeing the flowers because I know the clothes are the buds of the flowers. I just want to know how they actually look. Let's go. Let's see how the flowers look. I mean, I could Google it on the sleeve. In the forests of South India, harvesters climb trees as tall as 50 feet to handpick these clove buds. When exported, less than half a pound of these dried cloves cost $30. That's 10 times as much as some cumin. But as they focus on keeping their balance, harvesters must also be careful not to break the buds. If they do, the value oh. of the clove drops significantly. And that's just where the risk begins. To harvest cloves correctly, workers put their lives on the line. Literally. So what makes cloves worth the risks? And why are they so expensive? Cloves are the flower buds of clove trees that haven't blossomed yet. When dried, they're commonly used as a spice. I don't really like a it. A clove's flavor is complex, with notes of sweetness, bitterness, and heat. The oil found in cloves has medicinal properties that make the spice valuable outside of just cooking. Cloves with the round head or crown still intact have the most oil. But to get cloves with the highest possible oil content, highly skilled workers are needed at every stage. Clove is, uh, harvesting is a very big job. It's a very risky job. So we, we have to get uh, special people to do that. To get to the top of the trees, harvesters like Shibu rely on only a ladder and some rope. What? Wouldn't it be easier to just grow the trees and let's say have them trimmed? I wonder if the cloves are those kind of plants, one of those plants that you have to have them like they, they, they bloom on the old wood, meaning that the, the branches that they grew last year, they're gonna bloom next year. So I mean like if the branch growing this year, it's not going to bloom this year, it's going to bloom next year. I wonder if that's the case, this is why they let them grow so far, so so high and make it dangerous then. Because obviously they probably could trim them in some way. Hmm, I wonder. He reinforces the bottom of the ladder with mud, so it doesn't move as he navigates the tall tree. Shibu ties a sack to his waist and then he starts his climb, working his way from the top of the tree to the bottom. Harvesters can't pick too soon or too late, or the cloves will drop in grade and value. In addition to picking at the exact right time and being careful not to harm the clove bud, they need to be sure not to break the tree branches they climb. Otherwise, the tree will have a lower yield next harvesting season. Navigating all these elements can be extremely dangerous. In Black Rock Estates, harvesting cloves has led to death. A couple of years back, we lost a worker who was in the, while he was plucking the lightning strike him. We lost it. almost about six of them was they had paralyzed like they, we had to take them, rush them down to the hospital, and they were admitted for a month. Yet hand picking is the only way farms like Black Rock Estate have managed to keep delivering quality cloves. Because timing is crucial, Charles needs a big team to pick the cloves as soon as they're ready, which is usually mid to late February. Charles can sell the cloves for their highest price in the first 25 days of the harvesting season. The more he can harvest during this time, the better it is for business. When the clove season is fully on, when we have a very good crop, we get about nearly about 300 workers. During peak harvesting season, these workers make around $30 a day on average. Once the clove clusters are picked, harvesters carefully remove the individual buds from the stalks and leaves. They sift and sort each bud according to its size, age, and whether it has a top. It's best if the circular crown of the clove, where it would otherwise flower, is still intact. This improves the spice's taste and aroma. Even though there are machines to help with this process, Charles prefers to pay for it to be done by hand, 
to lower the risk of clove damage. They have clove breaking and uh, sorting with machinery. But still, the, the half the clothes is damaged in that. We get broken clothes in that. So mm -hmm. not very good doing to the machine. The highest quality clothes were picked at the right time. And then time. you, you, you give less work to people around as well. They're large and plump and still have the crown. Second quality clothes also still have their tops, but they're smaller. They were either picked too early or too late. And the third quality has no crown, with the top having either huh. flowers or broken flowers. off. After the sorting, workers leave the clothes out to dry in the sun. High quality clothes take three days to dry under good sunlight. But a quality clove won't always get sold as the highest grade, because official grading doesn't happen until after it's dry. If there's too little or too much sun, the clove's quality drops. Instead of golden brown, it becomes black, and it loses one of its most valuable properties, uh -huh. its oil content. First quality cloves are the most fragrant and have the highest oil content. The headless third quality cloves have the least. And the difference shows in the price. Charles sells his first quality cloves for about $10 a kilogram and its lowest grade for under $7. Clove oil is mostly made up of the compound eugenol, which is not only responsible for the clove's familiar aroma, but also for its medicinal benefits. Researchers have noted eugenol has antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, pain-relieving, and antioxidant properties. So the demand for cloves goes beyond their culinary uses. Cloves are so sought after in India that Charles is able to sell more than just the buds. We sell everything, nothing goes to waste. Even the pollen, the dust, everything we sell. That's also because the cloves he grows, Kanya Kumari cloves, are known for their high oil content and strong aroma. In fact, these cloves were awarded a GI indication in 2021. Charles says Kanya Kumari cloves are the most expensive doing that from the trees. in India. When you go to the market to buy cloves, the clove price will be about three times the price what we give. It will be about 2,000 rupees, where we get only 750. The retail price is so much higher because of the supply chain. To maximize on profits for the farm, Charles won't sell his cloves directly to consumers, who only buy smaller amounts as needed. Instead, he sells to clove dealers who buy large quantities. Dealers like Franklin Roosevelt then have to keep the cloves fresh until they sell them to retailers. If he doesn't store the cloves properly, their shelf life drops. Glow के लिए एक temperature उस temperature में वो लोग उसको stock रखते हैं और mostly cold storage में ही जाके उतरता है मतलब normal temperature में रहेगा तो माल भी खराब हो जाता है और उसका taste flavour नहीं रहता. To cover the cost of quality control, Franklin sells cloves to stores for almost twelve dollars a kilo. The shops that buy from Franklin have to pay transportation and packaging costs, bringing the retail price of clothes in India even higher. But one of the biggest challenges in every step of the supply chain has been the changing climate. The वो लोग हम लोग ये बहुत बाहर गांव से लेबर्स बहुत लाते हैं तो लेबर्स को नौकरी नहीं होता है हम लोग ट्रेडिंग भी उतना ठीक से कर नहीं पाते Between 2018 and 2019 India lost 13 metric tons of cloves due to heavy rainfall And while the global clove market is expected to grow by 3.5% by 2027 the changing climate may still continue to disproportionately burden clove farmers नहीं अभी फार्मर्स लोगों को इतना उसमें प्रॉफिट नहीं दिख रहा है क्योंकि वो मैं बोला ना ऐसे बारिश हो जाता है तो ये सब होता है और उनको उतना जितना उन्होंने इन्वेस्टमेंट किया है उतना उनको रिटर्न नहीं है वो है अगर वो लोग भी अगर ट्रेडिंग लाइन में आते हैं तो ठीक है लेकिन बहुत कम लोग ही आते हैं क्योंकि वो लोग इतना रिस्क लेके सब लोग नहीं जाते हैं इसमें रिस्क लेंगे तो है पैसा मिलता है इफ यू लाइक सो एक्सपेंसिव देयर इज अ न्यू शो कमिंग फॉर यू दिस टाइम अबाउट एक्सपेंसिव फूड्स एंड द पीपल बिहाइंड देम We've already shown you some of the pricey foods the world has to offer. What is that? Now join us as we take you underground for anti caviar in Mexico, inside the luxury mango market in Japan, and mm -hmm. beyond. So expensive food coming soon. Phew. That's 
something to watch, guys. Okay. So, do you like clubs? I do like it. I do like to add them to a uh, uh, pear compote. We always add a few cloves to that, and it adds a really nice kind of flavor to it. And um, I just like it. This is my flavor. So yeah, so that was really interesting. And uh, it's really kind of nice to see how those flowers actually look. Like, like I said in the beginning, I knew that they are just buds and I suppose preferably would be before they even bloom, obviously. So yeah, and uh, yeah, that was really good. Um, but I kind of wonder, could they just do hmm, with like shorter, um, shorter trees making maybe make like a take some cuttings and just plant them somewhere else on, on the farm and just try to grow them although it probably take years as well to grow them so yep but that explains a lot the, the climbing up the tall, tall tall trees and stuff like that and trying to pick everything from there dangerous and that makes it expensive huh? thank you very much for watching nice see you tomorrow bye